Auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. I think can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Online can they hear? Yes. Inshallah. The foundation of everything that we are trying to achieve and safeguarding from every difficulty that's coming is through the hidden channel that this way is not based on your exterior eyes and the exterior ears of what you hear and what you see physically all of that will be a deception and that Naqshbandiya and Haqiqat al-Muhammadiya is broadcasting on a private channel and the information that coming from Malakut and the world of light, the world of form is but an illusion and the abode of every fitna. And now even more so fitna will be everywhere and our only safety is in the world of light. So how do we open up that channel in the world of light and that's what we call meditation, tafakkur and Allah some people made comments, oh I never even heard of meditation in Islam. We're here to speak English and not to make people to be Arabs. Arabs they're already Arabs, they don't, we're not here to teach Arabic. But throughout Holy Qur'an, tafakkur, the uh, Ahlul Tafakkur, people of the Bab, Ulama Qa'im al Bilqist, Allah continuously makes reference to categories of people whom live a life of contemplation. They're not external people who just, you know, pass life as if life is everything, but there are people who stop to smell the flowers, to get the fragrance, to get the treasure of what Allah wants. So no, Qur'an is all about tafakkur and these haqqaiqs are all about tafakkur. So it's not that it's not in Qur'an, no it's a, that is the Qur'an. Prophet achieved those realities by showing us that making it to God continuously in a state of tafakkur and contemplation. To make it easier it's the word is meditation. One is to stop life and meditate on how to open this world light and tadhakkir. Allah tafakkur is to stop and contemplate tadhakkir is now to remember that Allah has programmed all these realities upon the soul. So now how to bring out alam al-Qur'an khalaq al-insan. So Allah, Allah taught us before He created us. How do we get what Allah taught us? And that is the way of the tafakkur and contemplation. And a very sensitive issue that people don't like the sound of it, but it's like at school. If anybody has, has had any education or higher schooling, you have to get the teacher's attention. You have to get the shaykh's attention. And because of the internet, we have 10,000 people saying, Oh, make du'a for me, make du'a for me, oh salam, salam, oh shaykh, you're everything, everything. Yeah, the talk is cheap. So it's not about talking on and saying you're everything and everything. You need the shaykh's attention through being of service by giving from what Allah has given to you of your money, of your life, of your time, of your ability. It means you have to put it on the table and say, this is what Allah has given to me, I want your attention. I'm going to support your mission, I'm going to support your work, I can transcribe, I can write, I can be of service, I can do something other than coming trying to just you know take the information, take the knowledge as you need his attention. The real attention and the real student and shaykh bond is in the world of khitmah, means a person who serves. So when we knew with our shaykhs that we have to go out and do dawah. And then we direct them to the shaykh so that this is a khitmah and people start knocking and pounding on their doors and say, I read this from him, I heard this from him, I did this. So we live a life of trying to get their attention and by doing that khitmah we get the attention of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why our lives are busy continuously three days a week 
how to do the zikr, how to do the mafil, how to make it better, how to make it stronger, how to make it bigger, how to move around and spread it through television, through radio, through books, through internet, through social media. So the shaykh lives a life of khidmat and being of service to get the attention of Sayyidina Muhammad and to get the attention of his shaykhs. When he gets their attention by all he's doing, they send more fires, more rizq, more power, more lights, more everything. Because they're saying, why to send this person a river when we can send him a couple of drops and he doesn't do anything. But when you're out and you're of service to Prophet and you try to make your da'wah strong and spreading it, then they send you like ocean in, in light and in energy and in understandings inshaAllah. So the first of the foundation is to make that relationship. So that muhabbat of the shaykh and the love of the shaykh is not something that you say by only your side but you live a life of khitmah. That how Ya Rabbi from what you gave to me, I'm going to give to them, I'm going to give to him to get his attention, to be of service and to to use whatever Allah is God-given gift, even whether it's just cleaning, anything, anything in the way of Prophet That creates that station of muhabbat, that I'm coming with a real love, not a love by only tongue but love by action. That love then can you now how to keep the hudur, how to keep the presence of the shaykh. So your presence is you're watching him on live, you're watching him at the center and then now you're going to train on how to always keep that presence with you no matter where you go. Anybody asking any questions on this subject so far? A couple of questions. You, you make sure that they're related to this topic <laughs> and not asking about the color yellow or something. <laughs> you kind of answered it but is there anything particular we are supposed to feel or look out for while doing the meditation? Feel or look out for? The shaykh. <laughs> yeah, the, the, this level of tafakkur is to sit in a room and put salawats on so that you can hear this beautific energy and to feel it with your heart. And you feel to yourself that you're isolated, it's like your grave, There's you're all alone. And then I'm sitting and I'm listening to salawats, I hold my, my pulse because I want to feel my heart. I'm going to put my hand to feel my thumb because the thumb is holding the pulse of my heart. So that this is going to be a, a fatkur meditation based on my qalb. As soon as I, I hold that thumb, I feel my, my pulse is beating. And because my relationship now I've built with my shaykh, I'm asking in my meditation, Oh Allah don't leave me alone. Your, your order was, itaqullah wa kunu ma sadaqeen that I was to have a taqwa and was to always keep the company of your pious people. So not only physically but spiritually, that I'm sitting in my room, I want to be with my teacher and that I visualize him in front of me and that I say to myself, I don't need to see you because that's from the nafs. That oh, where are you, where are you? Shaykh, when I go to my eyes I can't see you, it's not important to see. But just to know that I, I want to be in your presence and that you're right in front of me and I, and I shouldn't even be looking at you Then I just keep myself on a humble path that I'm nothing, I'm nothing. That put your fires upon me, put your eyes upon me, put your light upon me and every day two, three, four, five minutes keep that state. And that's best from Asr on. You don't try to do meditation at Zohr because that's a busy signal, everybody's working, everybody's trying to make money. You have to go when the energy field is, is coming down like this earth is dying, everybody from Asr time is going home, they're tired. This field of energy for tafakkur and for the soul becomes stronger from Asr all the way up to Salat al-Tahajjud and Fajr inshaAllah. Next. Yeah. Uh, Mawlana, please can you explain conscious breathing, hosh dardam in meditation, how to do it and how to be consistent? Hosh dardam is to be conscious of the breath, 
that later in the in the states of tafakkur, the most important first is to establish the presence of the shaykh. So that you have the love, you're coming with the muhabbat, the khudur is your khidmat and being of service and, 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 and uh, doing all that you can to get their attention, their nazar, their gaze upon you. Then you sit and begin to practice how that I, I want to see that energy there that the shaykh is there and I'm nothing, the shaykh is there and I'm nothing. Sayyidi, dress me from your light. And so we have a, an awrad, a daily wazifa that we're supposed to do. So I sit and I make three shahada, seven day istighfar and all of this is on the app. So the app is there for all the du'as, all the salawats, all the awrads, all the, everything that we're supposed to be doing in the tariqah, it's all compiled onto the app. So you sit and meditate and do your connection, do your awrad and visualize the shaykh in front of you. And then you say your three shahadas and that and your seven istighfar for first make the connection. As soon as you're starting to make the connection that you feel the presence of the shaykh is there, you feel like an energy come, you feel like a, your heart is constricting because when his energy comes, it comes with a might and you feel your heart, something is happening like a constriction into the heart, their energy is present with you. Once you can reach to that state. So we have to step, step. Sound, sound, something with the sound. You in the sound or now? Now it's working. Back. 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 I'm not happy with these things. <laughs> so we go step by step. First is to make the connection. Somebody who's made the connection, they feel the sense of shake. Feel the shaykh is in that room, then they'll ask the shaykh, dress me from your presence, dress me from your light and from your energy and then begin to take a way of, of breathing. Every time they meditate they immediately go into their, their dress of the shaykh and they begin to breathe the zikru, hold their thumb and they breathe and breathe out. And asking the shaykh that send the energy and the qudra into my breath and all my badness to be pushed out and all goodness to be dressed within me. And then you practice that every day, two, three minutes, just hold the thumb in the madad of the shaykhs that they're dressing you. You reach the state in which you feel like their energy is coming and then you say that I want to open up the power of breathing. And then by zikrahu, I want to release all my bad energy and breathing in all the positive energy into the heart. And then it goes deeper and deeper but that's just for an introduction because we don't know that who's at what state and, and who's asking. That's it? No, there's more. Um, some yeah, keep going. Yes, yeah, Sayyidi, if a dependent cannot do khidmat from a far distance, how should we they participate in khidmat? Uh, that's impossible unless you got no hands, no feet, <laughs> no eyes and no ears because khidmat can be anything. We have people all over the world, it's not only these gentlemen that are sitting here, we have people all over the world that are transcribing, they take the talk, they, they immediately start to write it out into their language, they send it in for review, they start to sort of put it together, they co compile books from that. So there's a, always a way of khidmat. We even have people who are in Pakistan that get together, they collect money in Pakistan and they go give the food out at a maqam. So there's, there always has to be a way in which to give from our, our life, from our time, from whatever Allah gave of an, uh, of an ability inshaAllah. And if not, then alhamdulillah the shaykh knows that best that you have absolutely no way of, of being of service and Allah bless you and give you more and, and open an opportunity for you to have those abilities inshaAllah. Uh, how can we achieve presence all the time? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Is that from uh, Haji uh, Samad? Uh, Aliyah. <laughs> No, you don't have to give the name, but yeah, that's that's the <laughs> ultimate goal. That's the ultimate goal. 
is that we go step by step is how to to make the connection how to feel so then you'll enter from the muhabbat is the love so we have the love of the association that this this stage of muhabbat is it has to be a very clean and respectful love like the 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 love for for you know pious people so it's usually denoted with green hearts and regular flowers nothing to insinuate anything romantic and incorrect you keep the love of the shaykh then learning how to make the hudur of the shaykh means that i want to see you then i want to meditate and i always want to be with you so that i'm always in your presence and then based on the good character, the good actions and a daily muhasaba as a daily accounting of myself. As much as I'm bringing this Muhammadan light, Allah wants us to make an accounting that if we live with haqq and we're doing correct, that light becomes stronger and stronger. Everything we do of falsehood and incorrect the light begins to dissipate and go away because that light of Sayyidina Muhammad the truth and falsehood they don't mix. So it means that every time I try to do good I feel that light, as soon as I do bad things and bad actions that light goes. So then the student becomes thumma amanu thumma kafaru, one day they're doing good and believe, next day they're not doing good and they don't believe, the light goes away. But Prophet doesn't stick with something that's incorrect. So then as much as we can keep the goodness, good character, that's why the shaykhs teach good character. So yeah, if you see a shaykh who's yelling and screaming and angry and smoking and doing every type of crazy thing, no he doesn't have a light attached. Prophet never would attach with something incorrect and bad. So then our whole way is based on how to keep the good character, Good manners, muhabbat, ihtiram, keeping the shariat to the best of their ability, and that that light of Prophet dress them, bless them. So it's about building the energy and keeping the energy. Many people build the energy and they have like a leaking house where it just goes everywhere, it goes out with all their bad actions. Next. I think that's it. That's it. Interactive Thursday is two questions. <laughs> this is moving closer towards what we had in vision of our Simply Iman, which would be an online platform for people to log in from everywhere and begin to have courses and classes that people could learn these subjects. And it's not only the people who come to be present on the carpet. That we know many of the people who are logging on. We know them by their service, their donations, their 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 contributions, and you know their translating and all the things that people are doing. So we see those whom are logging on, and, and we understand that they're studying the way, they're buying all the books, they studied the books, they study the website, they're reading the articles. Tafakkur is the foundation of this whole. Tariqah, tafakkur is also the foundation of all good character. And you can't have good character if you don't sit and meditate to find out what you're doing wrong. People think, oh no Shaykh, I'm really good. Until you sit one day and meditate that, you know, really what did you do that day and was it really right and wrong and who did you harm with your tongue and with your action? If that day you harm somebody, Allah doesn't count that as a good day at all. So then people when they make their muhasaba, they become disappointed and that's why it's not an easy process to take an accounting of oneself and trying to build oneself and, and to clean oneself. It's better when Allah describes they, they make their desires their Lord. But many people feel it's much better just to ignore that and do whatever they want. But muhasaba to sit and to make an accounting out of what did I do today and who did I harm honestly? Not in regards to what they did wrong. But I always have to blame my nafs. I am completely the one in error and I don't understand what I did wrong and who did I harm with my tongue and with my actions. If I don't take that account and think that tomorrow would be better, then I'm not growing. I'm just going the reverse direction more towards bad. So the muhasaba is essential, the accounting is, is, is essential for the way and the foundation.
Can we be of service spreading light while meditating? Can we be of service spreading light while meditating? Yeah, if you, you can't give what you don't have, so the whole process of trying to have is that, Ya Rabbi, I want to build my energy, build my energy. When we feel that that energy is coming, then my Lord, I'm praying for all these people, pray for all the people that you know, all the people that you love and that when you become like a light worker, that you work in the world of light, that you try to build yourself and know that wherever you're going, you're making du'a for people. They don't have to know who you are, they don't have to know anything about you. You can go, when you go to the grocery store or you go to your favorite places, you can make du'as for people, Ya Rabbi, just send that light upon them and take away their difficulties and their sadness. So as much as we can build, as much as we can give, the most important in these days is for your family. That you know that your, your children will become sick from the parents. So imagine the children are like little sponges pure from paradise, they just landed from paradise. You know how they become sick is from the parent. Every time the parent touches and kisses the child, this law of energy is that the positive energy will collect negative energy. So whoever is more negative will be sending their energy, whoever is more positive will be carrying the energy in any association. So in a home the child is the most positive in energy unless it's a shaykh or, or developed student. And that's, that's why so many difficulties in the home. As soon as they have children, all the energy are going on to the child because the child is not protected, the parents are not doing the proper actions and, and deeds and all that energy goes. So the more we think of, of, of our belief in regards to energy and that's the importance. So when we wash, when we pray, when we give our zakah, when we give our mawlid, we're taking and giving away many burdens. You know, these burdens are going away instead of going on to the child and kissing the child and then touching the child and all these energies go on to that child. So it's important for us to take a way in which we build ourselves, build our energy, build our practices and that find the way in which to extinguish the negative charge from ourselves so that we become now a plus in the home. If the person who meditates and contemplates become excessively positive, he begins to save his family. Because he begins to send a positive charge to the child, a positive charge to the spouses and the environment becomes net positive instead of negative and like a whole black hole where everything just going into it, it's now radiating out a power. And that's why you enter into some of these homes and you feel a sense of peace. Like the shaykh's home, the zawiya or the khanaqa, it has a tremendous amount of energy and a sense of peace. Because within that house is built the zikr and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why people walk in the inn they say, oh I feel a tremendous amount of energy and peace. And that energy is so positive that it pulls away all the negatives of anyone who enters in inshaAllah. Next. <laughs> Should we have to wear some proper dressing or any color for the meditation? Yeah, anytime we're, we're taking a spiritual path and we're deep within this dunya world, we should separate our clothing. Those whom are working out, you know, and, and, and struggling and doing all their work, alhamdulillah, they should have a set of clothes that are specifically for spiritual program. That they, they take off their dunya, they wash, they shower and they sit with some nice meditation clothes that completely reminds them of meditation. And it's funny that all Eastern cultures do that. So when the kids sign up for karate, they immediately make them put on this karate suit that it looked like a sunnah suit because it's a loose shirt, loose pants, tied with a rope. And immediately they feel like in the karate mood and they're going to chop and, and jump on everything. Same thing that you have to get into the sunnah mode and meditation mode that you take off your dunya clothes, you work hard, alhamdulillah, wash, shower. And now put on your ruhani clothes that you sit and you meditate and you cry unto Allah in something that's nice and clean and perfumed for, for worshipness. And same for the zikr, but don't come with your work clothes to the zikr. Mawlana Shah Naqshaban used to mandate, now a lot of these things no longer are done because the people are weak and they'll run away. So the shaykh is trying to be as polite as possible, but in reality Mawlana Shah Naqshaban 
made a shower outside and mandated that anybody who came had to shower and then put on a nice white outfit and then sit in his presence for the tafakkur and the meditation in which they meditated twice or three times a week Mawlana Shaykh would say. And that was the adab of, of coming into the presence of the shaykh and the adab of, of going to somewhere rohani and, and special. Yahya likes that, he made downstairs like a spa, he put all sorts of <laughs> towels and shampoos for people. <laughs> They were all showering and giving their towels and say, here. <laughs> Next question. Yeah, you got more? Okay. Um, Sayyidi, how to know for sure in meditation that we are hearing the heart and not the head, the nafs, shaitan? Yeah, for sure know that you're hearing your nafs and shaitan. The, 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 the general rule in, in tafakkur and, and trying to listen is that it's always to tell myself that my shaitan is going to say everything. So anything related to ibadah and worship is from the soul, anything in relationship to anything other than that is from the nafs. So for example when you sit and meditate if your soul tells you sit here another 10 hours, read half the Qur'an, pray 200 rakahs, that's the one you're going to ignore. You say, oh no, I don't, no, I'm not going to listen to that. But if all of a sudden your nafs tells you, you know what, you should call up your friend and they did something wrong, that completely is the nafs. So it means that the soul is, is never inspiration to deal with anyone other than the self. So when, when you're inspired by your soul to pray more, to give more, to do more, to do everything that's hard upon the self, it's rohani. If it's about doing something to someone else, clarifying to someone else, something that make you to feel better by going out and bothering somebody else, it's all nafsan. InshaAllah we leave you with that and we leave something for next week. Illa Sharif Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa alihi sahbihi kiram wa la mashaykhina fi tariqat nashmandiyyat al aliyya wa sayyidu wa sadatina wa siddiqin al fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.